Welcome to Real Physics. I have made two videos about how Einstein's unified field theory intrigued me so much. It's really interesting and you can learn a lot about differential geometry, but I think I should tell you also why I'm convinced that unfortunately it's not the right way to solve these most fundamental puzzles of nature. And there are basically two objections. Well, one of them is if you follow the line that, well, there is torsion and you can interpret this as defects in solids, it's very, very interesting. But at the very end, you have something like an ether theory, which you can consider a very interesting attempt. I've made a couple of videos about that. However, at the very end, you ought to explain constants of nature. And in any ether theory, even if it works perfectly, even if everything is fine, it does not contradict general, uh, sorry, special relativity, by the way. But even if it works perfectly, you still have to postulate two constants of nature, which is the density of the ether and the elasticity. These are two things you cannot explain from first principles. And I think this is a problem. By the way, I had a very nice discussion with Shilo and Anastasia. And if you're interested, look at this video. And if you want to discuss that in person, there's a very nice conference in Portugal this year where you can still participate. Anyway, the second objection to Einstein's unified theory is even more serious because Einstein asks the right questions. For example, at the end of his 1930 paper, he says he has hope that well, maybe there might be some equation and the solutions of this, of this equation might be the electron and the proton. Wonderful idea. That's what you have to explain. As a physicist, you ought to explain these two particles. But unfortunately, he wasn't successful. Well, you could still think about, you know, maybe we can still work in this direction. But who was also concerned with that kind of number was Paul Dirac. And Paul Dirac, as I have mentioned several times, pondered decades of his life about for example, why the proton is so much heavier than the electron, 1836 point something. However, a still more important contribution of Dirac to fundamental physics is his large number hypothesis. That is, consider the enormous ratio of the electromagnetic to the gravitational force. For example, in the hydrogen atom, it's an absurd number, 10 to the 39, 2.27 times 10 to the 39 almost 40 digits, incredible. And well, I talked a lot about Dirac's large number hypothesis, how it might be, how that number might be related to the size of the universe, and the size of the proton, very interesting, and so on. But unfortunately, there is no way in Einstein's approach, in Einstein's unified theory, to get that kind of reasoning into the picture. There's nothing about cosmology, nothing about Mach's principle in the sense that you relate the strength of gravity to the mass distribution in the universe. And that's so fundamental, it cannot be missing in a theory that you want to call unified. So unfortunately, Einstein wasn't even very aware of. I mean, Dirac came out with that spectacular idea in 1938. And and some attempts were about 10 years earlier. And at the time, I think he was busy with other things. Unfortunately, he got distracted, in my view, by some other kind of irrelevant cosmology. And well, uh, I see the Einstein's, uh, Einstein's unified field theory attempt as a very intriguing thing. But on the other hand, I'm convinced there is something very fundamental that is missing. And for that reason, we have to at least pursue also other avenues. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like it. And if you're interested in that kind of fundamental questions, subscribe to this channel.